Word Outreach Ministries Church. It is good to see you here again. We're always excited about the next uh, upcoming course in Revelation, what we've been talking about, and we're going to be continuing with uh, part two of our pale horse. Uh, we did a recap on last week, and we covered, we went backwards and talked about the white horse all the way up to uh, our black horse, which was famine. And remember I said that um, uh, every horse was um, the characteristics or the spirit of the first horse, which is the white horse. And because of what the white horse is doing, you know, all these other horses came forth from what he's doing. So we know that uh, the white horse is the Antichrist, and being the Antichrist, he came to conquer and conquering. And so the things that he did causes a whole lot of things for his, in his lust for power. It causes a whole lot of things to take place. So on today, we're going to conclude with the pale horse, and uh, we, we are glad that uh, those of you who have kept up with the lessons, who have been watching the videos, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much because you are really appreciated. I really appreciate you. And um, there's a lot of uh, silence uh, about with the videos. So I don't know what's going on in your mind. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what, uh, whether or not you are liking the videos. But this is our last horse. And as we cover our last horse, we're going to be going into other subjects on concerns of the spirit. So I hope that you do get this last horse because the last horse is a combination of all that has happened thus far and everything that has gone on. So we're going to get right into our lesson and we're going to try to move as fast as we possibly can and get this, uh, get this out to you so that it can be there by uh, next week. So, Father God, we thank and praise you for uh, all that's gone forth. We, we magnify your name and, and, and we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise because you alone, you alone, you alone are worthy. And Father God, we praise and thank you for uh, uh, bringing us together, all of us that have come together to understand your word. We ask you, Father God, to let your spirit continue to open up the hearts and minds of those who would want the truth. And Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the infilling of your Holy Spirit and the guiding that will bring us to the knowledge of your word. Father God, we just give you all the honor, praise, and glory on today. We thank you. We thank you all so much, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. You know, on, on so many occasions, uh, I've had questions uh, come to me about um, Worldwide Word. So let me say real quick that uh, Worldwide Word, our mission is to bring understanding through sharing the Word of God. Uh, we keep it real. We, we stay with the Word. We keep it real. And, and uh, we try to stay up to date on current events, photos, videos, and news of Christian events around the world. So Worldwide Word Outreach Ministry Church has been teaching, sharing the Word of God for 26 years. And um, nine years actually on Facebook. So um, we uh, try to um, uh, stay within the boundaries of sharing the Word of God, getting the truth out, try to make sure that people understand uh, the Word of God. And I just thank and praise God for all the support over the years that has uh, uh, kept this ministry growing, kept this ministry going. So thank everyone. I thank you, everyone, that has all, always been uh, a great support to Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries. Amen. Amen. So on today we're starting in Revelation chapter 6. And we'll be starting at verse 8. Where, um, well, let's back up. We'll be starting at verse 7. And uh, uh, we're going to be talking about the, the, the continuation from our last week's video on the pale horse. 
Last week we talked about three horses, the white and the red and the black horse, the Antichrist, the Antichrist hatred, and famine. And um, the Antichrist who came, uh, he's lusting for power and he's trying to get himself in position uh, to be a world ruler. And I know a lot of people, uh, you know, don't really believe in, 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 in some of the stuff that you see on TV. People getting the attitude and they're getting the, uh, down in them that they want to become world rulers. They want to take over the world. Well, this is actually what the Antichrist is going to be trying to do. And in his process, we, got, uh, we have where there will, will, will be a situation where uh, we will have one world language. And uh, because of this one world language, uh, you'll get to pr uh, 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 produce uh, one world currency. And then after that, we'll have the one world order. So in, in, in that, we have to remember that this, this is all the work of the Antichrist. This, uh, and, and this is a goal toward being world ruler. Amen. So in the midst of all of this and the, and the chaos that breaks out because of this, we have wars and, and bloodshed and a lot of things happen uh, which brings forth the Antichrist hatred from the uh, next horse, which is the red horse. And then when we deal with the red horse, we find that his hatred increases war and bloodshed. And, and a lot of things happen. The cost of food goes up. Uh, Christianity is attacked. Um, a lot of people are persecuted and, and put in prisons, even killed because of this red horse. So we have to be, know and watch the patterns that take place because uh, the patterns start out, they start out small. And as they start out small, they grow into a worldwide effect. We see now that uh, because of uh, war and, and, and bombs and everything that's falling uh, overseas and stuff that's destroying the land. Uh, the land is becoming incapable to support life. And so we see the black horse begin to ride. And as the black horse began to ride, famine spreads, hunger and thirst is spreading among the people. And, the, and, and this is the worst part of the black horse. Uh, starvation is a slow and extremely slow killer. And so we find that over a process of time, people are actually starving, sickness is taking place from immune systems breaking down because their body doesn't have the nutrition in it to keep the body healthy. And so the immune system breaks down. When the immune system breaks down, disease break out. And when the disease break out and spread, then we have the problem with uh, death and dead bodies. And, 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 you know, people just dying left and right, you know, laying in the streets and carrying on. We talked about that when uh, we talked about the black horse and famine. And we saw the children laying in the street because their parents had died and no one was around to take these children up. And they were laying in the street starving to death. And so we found that uh, this causes the rise and increase in pestilence. And uh, on today, we, we are experiencing a lot of increase in pestilent problems. And uh, when we read in Revelation chapter 7, we're going to see that because of this, all this stuff that famine brings, now we have the problem with pestilence and death, which begins the red, the, the white, I mean the pale horse. It begins the pale horse to start his ride. And so we find where John on the island of Patmos begins to write, and it starts out in verse 7, he says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto, him, unto them, over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. Now watch this, because as I said, the, 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 the black horse 
has brought all this famine and disease and pestilence into play. And now because of the pestilence, this, this, this pale horse begins his ride. And then the pale horse begins to ride and he brings with him death. Amen? So death is the rider on the pale horse. And being the rider on the pale horse being death, the Bible says clearly hell followed. Followed with him. And to them, they were given power over what? Over a fourth part of the world. Now watch this because a lot of people miss this mark because they don't imagine in their mind the devastation of what it would be for one-fourth of this planet to die. One-fourth of this planet would die. One-fourth. That means everything in the sea, man, animal, they, they dying. One-fourth of this earth dead. Now, can you imagine the, the rate of death and the rate of trying to uh, uh, bury these bodies and dispose of these bodies would become, it will overtake man. And so you'll find a lot of situations in certain areas, it's going to be hard to get rid of the bodies that are laying around safely, cleanly. And so that's where your pestilence come in at. Your pestilence becomes, it, it gets increased in, in the pestilence. So, you know, the effects of the first horse is the, uh, uh, comes from the second horse who comes to spread that hatred and war. The spreading of the second horse causes the land to be unable to support life, as I said, and food cost rises at its shortage, grows, and water becomes limited. And, you know, as I talked about with the black horse, we find overseas on today in the third, third world, world countries where they're actually drinking their sewage water. And so that, that, that brings uh, an awareness on how devastating things will get, how bad things will actually be when you actually are forced into drinking sewage water. So, you know, we, we, we have to keep our mind on the fact that this, this horse, this, this, this next horse, this pale horse, is it, going to be a lot more worse than any of the any of the other ones. Because in him is cause and effect. Huh? A lot of people don't understand that. So let me make that plain. Cause and effects. Because the Antichrist rides. The effects is from the white horse is the red horse. And because the red horse began to ride, the effects is the black horse. And because the black horse began to ride, the effects of him is our horse we talk about today, or uh, is the pale horse, which means that one-fourth of the earth is dead. One-fourth of the earth is killed. Now you have to keep in mind that Jesus, was, was when he gave descriptions of what was going to be going on, he also made the statement that this is only the beginning of sorrow. But the time is not yet. God said in Ezekiel 18, 4, and 20, he said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. A clear picture of what God is saying is, is made here. The pale horse will accomplish that which he sets out to do because of man's determination to follow after everything other than God. And God is doing a wake-up call and a shaking of this planet. We find that, you know, a lot of times in Revelations, you see after uh, certain things that happens, or uh, after God has done certain things, the Bible says, and a great earthquake took place. That's God shaking. That's the shaking. God shaking and saying, it's time to pay attention. 
So we find that the pale horse, uh, he, he, he goes forth uh, to kill a fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword. This is war. When we read in Revelations about the sword, we're reading about warfare. We're reading about what's going to happen. This is war that's going to be taking place around the planet. And then it says, with hunger. This is starvation. This is the effects of our black horse again. This is a, 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 the famine that's spreading across the, across the planet. And over a fourth part of the earth, it, it begins to die. So it, said, the rest, it says, and with death. And with the beast of the earth. Now let me show you what, what's happening here. Because when you get a land that becomes so devastatingly messed up the way it can't support life, you can't grow food, water becomes scarce, and so what happens, what happens with the animals? Wild animals begin to come inwardly toward man because food becomes scarce around areas where they're normally isolated at, and so the wild beasts of the field as, as, as uh, Daniel talked about in the Old Testament, the wild beasts of the field will begin to attack man. So you have to get a picture in your mind what happens. Say you live in the heart of the city. And those, those, those animals which normally stay away from the city because uh, they don't like human contact and they hide in woods or, or outside the city and stay as far as they can, you find them coming in to the city and you can look out your front door or your back door and you may see uh, a lot of animals that are in your own yard so so this this is this is this is something that's going to be extremely crucial because uh, consider uh, 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 over uh, seas where your third world countries uh, some of the wild animals, which are lions and, and tigers, coming into the city limits. Right outside people's front door because they're that hungry. Amen. So, it's, you know, as we notice that uh, a clear picture of what God is saying is made here uh, and with the pale horse. The time will come when people will have uh, uh, they will have to decide. They will have to decide whether they will believe God for their very soul's sake. They will have to make the final decision. You're going to have to choose. And you can, you can choose science, as I said before, or you can choose faith in God as to what is really going on right in front of your face. Science will say this is impossible. Science will say it's something that it, it can be dealt with. We can, we can work this out. We can deal with this. And yet, science will never come up with a, a, a solution for the problem. Because the solution is not natural. The solution is supernatural. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Because they don't apply the supernatural or the spiritual application where it's needed. Uh, in, in, in Revelations, you would hear uh, as, as the letters went out to the seven churches, uh, John kind of went, wrote to, to the seven churches, and he constantly said, let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Let me make that plain. Let him that has a spiritual ear hear what the Spirit says unto the church, because the natural ear cannot hear the Spirit. Hello? Paul said in Corinthians that the, th the things of this world are in in enemy, an enemy to God or spiritual things because they're carnal. You, they, cannot, they cannot relate. So when you're stuck with science, you are using carnality. You're stuck in carnal mindedness because you're not thinking spiritually. And Paul said that we were carnal when we think that way or we think naturally 
And we don't look into the spiritual realm. We don't see the spiritual application. And the spiritual application is um, the fact that what's going on in Revelations is supernatural. And science and man and nothing else is going to change or stop this. It will happen. The, the pale horse will ride. And when he rides, it will be a situation where um, uh, uh, medicine, um, you know, uh, certain uh, operations, none of this stuff is going to be able to stop what's going on. Now, I talked about uh, uh, Sam, who was laying in the street, you know, in Somalia, where he was laying in the street literally dying from starvation. And I was talking about how that even now, if you put him in the hospital and try to feed him or give him food, it would probably literally kill him immediately because his immune system, his digestive system, has shut down. And so he, he can't eat. And if he did eat, then the bacteria is in the food which the body normally fight off will not be able to fight it off. So Sam would eventually uh, 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 die from actually eating now. Once you reach this stage, it's too late to start eating. And I talked about also about uh, 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 a spiritual famine. And the spiritual famine that grows uh, we find in uh, uh, Second Thessalonians, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, that for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Now watch this in Second uh, Thessalonians, uh, chapter 2, and verse 3, talks about a falling away. And this means that people are going to spiritually shut down. They'll turn to tradition, they'll turn to uh, um, uh, history, they'll turn to everything but the spiritual application of what is going on. And I, I, I faced a lot of people who are into uh, their African heritage. They're into uh, uh, all kinds of uh, heritage such as uh, Ethiopia, they're, they're into... Um, uh, where their roots originated from, and they're getting caught up in this. And so they're saying, they're, they're believing that, you know, because of what they were taught hundreds of years ago, that the Bible is irrelevant. This makes the Bible irre irrelevant because what they know or what they've been taught has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so now they're saying, well, it's the truth. So if, if you are, if you are uh, 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 concentrating on history and you're stuck on your culture and you're saying, well, culturally, we believe this and we believe that, well, John has made it plain in Revelation that culture won't matter, race won't matter, creed won't matter, because like I said, this is a spiritual thing, okay? So let us get on with the lesson, let us continue to make sure that we keep it plain. Uh, you know, like I said, um, Ezekiel 4 and 20, uh, chapter 18, verse 4 and 20, uh, we read where uh, uh, God talked about the soul that sinned, it shall die. Okay, verse, verse 20 says, the soul that sinned, it shall die. The, soul, the son shall not bear the iniquities of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquities of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So we don't have to worry about heritage and cultural differences because a lot of people say that the sins of the father is visited upon the son. Well, there's going to come a time where what the father did is not going to have an effect on the son because the father may be wicked and the son may be righteous. And so the sins of the father will not affect the son. And, 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 and the righteousness of the righteous, that will remain on them. If you're righteous, righteousness is what you're going to be accounted to. If you're wicked, wickedness is what's going to be accounted to you. And you're going to be dealt with accordingly. Because man's wickedness, God makes it plain 
that he would not cause these things, but that he would step back out of the way of those who would destroy in the name of success, in the name of science, in the name of heritage, in the name of culture, in the name of, of, of race or creed, whatever you setting back doing, which is what I talked about, about that Antichrist. Because you have to watch this now. Watch this because the Antichrist, huh? The Antichrist comes and what he wants to do is pull you from the Word of God. And in order to do that, he wants to give you the scientific application, which means fact must outweigh everything. Fact must outweigh everything. Spiritual has nothing to do with it. And if spiritual has, spirituality has nothing to do with it, then the bottom line is you will forget the Word of God and stop looking at the spiritual application, the spiritual side of what's happening, and you'll, you'll expect science to do something about it. And this is one of the tricks of the Antichrist, where we see in uh, 2 Thessalonians in chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. And that's how a lot will be deceived. That's why he's riding on a white horse, because he came to deceive you. And, he, he, you know, Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 19 will be riding a white horse. Watch this. Both riding a white horse. So what did Jesus say? Many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. And so we found over time uh, uh, that a lot of people have taken the white horse of Revelation chapter 6 and they said, that's Christ riding on that horse. No, it is not. That's not Christ riding on that white horse. That is the Antichrist. And he came to deceive. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light. That means that he's coming to fool you. He's coming to trick you. And because of that, we get the effects of all the other three horses and the pale horse, which come with devastation over a fourth part of the earth. Dead. Amen. This is because of man's wickedness. Man looks everywhere but to God, continues to try and fix things their own way, only to continue to fail. And you know, as he begins, as he continues to fail, he still will not stop and turn over to God. Paul talked about carnality, and I would like to read uh, uh, in, in uh, the book of Corinthians how they got, uh, Paul, uh, Paul felt about being carnal. Paul said in chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, and verse 2 he starts out, and, and well, let, let, let us read the whole thing, and verse, uh, verse 1 uh, through 5. Paul said, and I, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. This is talking about saints, a lot of saints who allow themselves to be deceived or be tricked to believe that science carry more power than the word of God or God himself. That will believe that heritage carry more power than God himself. Believe that race, creed, or, 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 or culture, history, all that stuff carry more power than God himself. This is carnal. And your babies in Christ. Paul said in verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to hear it or bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. You have to understand that what Paul is talking about feeding you with milk means that he took the surface of what's going on and he gave that to you because if he go deeper than the surface, you lock it out and you won't receive it. A lot of people turn off. They shut down because they don't want to receive the truth. They want to stay on the surface where it feels good. I can preach to you all day and all night and I can get people riled up and get people excited as long as I talk about how uh, God will open the heavens, uh, uh, open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive and you'll get excited and then if I say God is going to destroy the soul that sinned, 
Everyone hear that. You want me to stay with the blessing part. You want to stay with the fact that God that, that, that God is going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. And then nothing you have to do for those blessings. You don't want to hear what you have to do. What's your part in the whole deal? Your part is, is, is very clear. Paul said, for ye are, in verse 3 says, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, division, are you not carnal and walk as men, are you not carnal and walk as men? In other words, you're not spiritual and not even, and, and walk as children of God. As children of God, you are what your parent is. You are God. You are little gods. So if, if, if you walking or proclaiming to walk with Christ and you walk as a man, then you're none of his. This is this is this true. You are not here. Just keeping it real. You don't belong to God if you're walking as a man in natural, in, in, in carnality. Okay? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom he believed. They're, they're, they're saying, we are all ministers. Of the same one God. So we all servants to God. So who are we to try to start pointing fingers? Oh, he, oh, he's so great. He's so much better. Putting people up on pedestals. Worshiping people. Huh? Watch out for it because worshiping somebody or something can slip in and you'll do it before you know you done done it. Stop it, people. We have to find the spirituality of a thing. Paul says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. If the Lord gave to every man, then the bottom line is, every man subject to the one Lord. In verse 6 he says, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So we have to remember that we have to stay in in our minds, the spiritual mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. This is our reasonable service. Verse 2 says that, that we should not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? By transferring your thought process from a natural process to a spiritual one. Amen. And understand what we're talking about. We, we, we find in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are not going to get around Jesus Christ. And why so many people are trying to get to God the Father around Jesus. They want to go around Jesus and get to him. I want to go to Jehovah. I want to go to Elohim. I want to go to Yahweh or Yah. They want to keep on with this. And God said, there is no other name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. Say the name of Jesus Christ. So we, not, we know that we have to stand on the name of, of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how you, this is how you begin to uh, uh, process your thoughts spiritually. The pale horse rider will make sure that death comes to all who will continue in their own way. In your own way. Remember, you cannot walk in your own way. Man will learn from this rider that in all his wisdom, he still can't learn how to defeat death. Death will come. This horse will ride. Ecclesiastes 8 and 8 says, There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. There is no man. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how much science you think you got. You cannot retain the spirit to stay alive when death comes. You will die. Science will not help. Life and death belongs to God alone. 
And the rest of that verse says, neither hath the power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. You can't get out of it. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. You can't expect, like the military service, where you get discharged when, 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 when you get injured or something. You stay in this battle until you're dead, or you stay in this battle until you won the war, until you've gotten victory. Amen? There's no discharge. Neither shall weakness deliver those that are given to it. One-fourth of the earth is dead. One-fourth of the earth dead. Because they will not be delivered. And those wicked, those that are wicked, will, will you know, suffer the, the situation or the conditions or the penalties of for what's going on. As Romans 6.23 tells you, that the ways of sin is death. Death will come. The male horse rider is what the first three have brought. This, this is cause and effect. This is what happened because of the first three. This will take place because of the greed for power of the first horse, the Antichrist. There came hatred and bloodshed from the second Antichrist hatred, which caused famine and hunger so bad that disease spread it and the sickness uh, caused pestilence, which kills one fourth of the earth by the third horse. And this starts the fourth horse to rise. And all this people still will not repent. And just as God said, seven times will plagues come in Leviticus 26, 21 through 46. This fourth horse whose name is death will be the one that will make people pay attention. It will say, wake up time, wake up time. You can believe it or you can reject it, but either way, you're going to deal with it. And there's nothing you can do to change this. And I'm telling people on the day that it doesn't make any difference whether you think, oh, I'll be long gone. I'll be dead and gone by the time this happens. People, these horses are riding now. And while you plaque and, and take for granted the life that you have, Outside your door approaches the pale horse. On your street is riding the pale horse. We're at the point, we're at a brink on today where children are no longer safe in schools or playing outside in the yards or even just going to the corner store to get them some candy and you got people out there with guns and shooting and carrying, uh, carrying on over small things. The slightest thing is, 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 is triggering people's anger. Hate it. People's anger is being triggered and, and, and gunfire is going off and your children are outside in the yard playing with these, these fools shooting randomly. Many times I've been right here in my own home and heard somebody just decide, oh, I'm going to show off. I got a gun. And they just shoot off in the air and they have no idea where that bullet is headed. And they don't even care. Because their joy is in the fact that I can shoot a gun. Look at me, y'all. Look at me. I'm shooting. But that bullet has a name on it and it's headed there. Is it a child sitting in the front room playing in their living room? Mom's in the kitchen washing dishes, pop, 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 she look around, her child laying over in the floor. Cause some fool is out there with a gun. I'm a little bit emotional about that, I'm touchy about that subject. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, death is growing. Young people are killing each other off left and right. Killing people over the fact that somebody disrespected me. You can't even spell the word disrespect. You don't even know what it means. But while you continue to disrespect everything around you, you want to get hostile because somebody disrespected you. Get yourself together. The word of God will be fulfilled.
And all these people still will not repent. Seven times will plagues come. The four horsemen whose name is death will be the one that will make people pay attention. And you will wake up. You will wake up. Will you die or will you turn to the Lord and believe? This is the question. The children of Israel in Egypt had that question presented to them. Will you die or will you believe God and put the blood over your doorposts? Everything that didn't believe God and did not put the blood over their doorposts died. Death came to their house and took the firstborn. And so death was made very real. Death was made very apparent to them. And so they began, they began to understand that you can't beat God. Pharaoh understood that when he let the children of Israel go. You can't beat God. And your gods can't beat God. Put your gods up. Make a decision. Will you die or will you believe? God has promised that he would remember the land for your sake. God has promised that he will remember the land for your sake. So when all this famine takes place, you know, Joseph experienced this. Joseph experienced this when he told the Pharaoh to take up and store during the years of plenty. So that when famine came, they were ready. When nobody else has stored up, you need to store up also. The word of God tells you to store up. Spiritual, spiritually, you need to store up. Get the word in you, get the word in you. So when you step outside and you see what's going on, when you watch your TV and you watch the news and you see what's going on, you listen to your radio, you see what's going on, you get on the internet, you see what's going on, you know it's all true and it's happening, don't justify it with some natural cat catastrophe or, or earthquakes are happening because it happens on the fault line. Well, what about an earthquake that happened and it wasn't nowhere near the fault line? And it never happened in your state ever. And hey, all of a sudden, the first earthquake that ever recorded in history in your state. What happens then? How do you justify that? It's a spiritual thing. Okay? God has promised. If you would return to him, but if you don't, then he would not remember. He said he would not remember. Man does not, man does not repent. And so seven more plagues, even after the seven seal plagues, seven more plagues come. And once the seven more plagues come, this is the time of Jacob's troubles, the great tribulation. And when we get uh, uh, to dealing with the, the, that, then we'll find that in the midst of it all, all this takes place. The great tribulation period will happen. So, as I say always, I say I give a, uh, just a surface uh, application on uh, something to give you something to go by, give you a guideline to go by. I hope these four horses have given you a guideline. I'm glad to announce that we're finally at the end of our four horses. We're, we're, uh, we won't be going into the rest of those seals. We're going to be stopping this because we are going to be going into some other concerns of the spirit. And we want to deal with some other things in the church that's going on in the church today. A lot of problems that's concerning the spirit that is happening amongst our people today. Uh, there is a spiritual dryness taking place. And it's time that we start dealing with that. It's time we start talking about that. What's going on? What's happening? And it's, like I said, it's all a spiritual thing, and we have to be able to deal with it. We have to be ready for it, and we have to get ourselves together so that we can uh, uh, be in a better place to, to deal with it. Amen? Amen? So we thank God for everybody that has joined us, everybody that has watched. We thank God for uh, uh, you staying with us. I do, uh, I, I, I do appreciate uh, your comments and uh, even the clicking the like button. I really appreciate all those who have stepped out to do so. So please continue to uh, let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. Let me know uh, how that the, the uh, 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 video is helping. If it is, you know, give me your, some testimony. Tell me something uh, about what's going on in your head. I would like to be able to continue the videos. 
I would like to be able to continue our concerns of the spirit, but I don't want to be uh, bringing something that nobody's interested in. Amen? And if you're not interested in it and, and so forth, then I will isolate my lesson to those that are interested. Amen? Well, but I, I want you to be interested. I want to keep going. I want to know that you want me to keep going. So comment, click on the like button, and let me know because I will cut this off and uh, uh, bring to you, you know, uh, written lessons and, and, and things like that. On Facebook, I want to uh, say that, you know, I will continue lessons uh, in my group on Facebook and let people know that if you want to uh, join Facebook, inbox me, let me know if you're not already a member of Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries Church group on Facebook and we'll try to get you added. Also, we uh, uh, want to be able to uh, reach out and deal with a lot of issues that are pertaining to people spiritually in their Christian walk. And so concerns of the spirit don't want to be all too long in these. And we've done uh, quite a bit of talking about these four horses. So we want to stay uh, uh, on, on course. And the four horses are concerned because I believe the four horses are uh, riding as we speak. It's just a matter of uh, getting them worldwide spread you get uh, on them so uh, once they began to manifest more so in our society when they began to manifest more so in in public areas where we where we are told by the news because a lot of people believe the news so when it shows up on the news you'll, you'll, you'll accept it and you'll see it more you don't hear a lot in the news on TV about people like Sam who's laying in the middle of the street and there's no one for Sam because Mom and dad is dead, you know, from hunger, and they starved to death, and they died, and the baby is now laying in the road, and his body is feeding off itself. He's living totally off of its own, off his own energy that's left, off, off his body. So when we realize that these things are becoming uh, a, a major concern, is when they show up on TV, on the news, and stuff like that. They continue to show up, uh, and then we begin to get concerned, then we begin to watch it, but know that, you know, this is coming to your street. This is coming to your street. The Antichrist hatred, you find that um, Muslims and uh, 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 other cultures are actually killing people because of Christianity. They're actually killing them. They're, job, they're, they're setting people on fire uh, uh, in our third world countries. They're actually setting them on fire. And, and they stone them in the streets and, and stuff like that. And all because of Christianity, because they're Christians. And this is not happening in our state yet. This is not happening over here yet. And so a lot of people are not concerned, really. They don't really put much interest in it. But there's going to come a time when it reaches here. It's going to reach your street. Then what's going to happen? Our military is being faced with it right now where uh, you have... Uh, uh, law in the military, in the military, where they're going to be uh, court-martialed for speaking Christianity. Is that not a beginning? Amen. Amen. So anyway, uh, let us conclude uh, with our four, with our fourth course, and we'll be back next week with a whole new subject. Uh, we're going to be leaving Revelations for a minute, and we're going to be coming to you with other concerns of the Spirit. And so stay with us. Keep watching. And we're going to start talking about some other matters that are concerns of the Spirit. Amen? And we hope that we can cover some things that you, have, that you feel that you're having a problem with or that you've seen. Maybe some things is going wrong in your church, in your home, uh, in your own life. We try to cover some of those uh, spiritually and try to get some solutions on what to do about it, what does the Bible say, how should we approach it, and we're going to cover all these grounds. Amen? So, Father God, we praise and thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor for being able to open up to us in a spiritual manner these four horses of revelation, the four horses of the apocalypse. Father God, we thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe from ever being uh, uh, part 
of such a chaotic situation because of man's ignorance, because man refuses to look to you. Father God, we thank and praise you for your spirit that keeps our minds stayed upon you. We ask you, Father God, to touch each and every heart, touch each and every soul. Bring them to the knowledge. Bring them to the understanding of what awaits them if they don't turn to you. And what awaits them if they did. We know that you said that, yes, you will open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they would not have room enough to receive. And Father God, we just stand on that promise. We stand in that, in, in, in that word that we can open heaven just simply by keeping our minds stayed on you. And we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, bless them, Father God, that have a heart that want the truth and your word, in your word, by your word. This we ask and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for seeing and being with us. See you on next week. Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries Church, Concerns of the Spirit.